Hello and welcome to the Fit and Free podcast. This is a podcast for women who want it all, to feel strong and confident in their bodies, as well as enjoying a sneaky mug on a Friday night. I'm an exercise physiologist and sports nutritionist here to teach you how to achieve your body goals without food and your body controlling your life. So let's jump in. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Fit and Free podcast. Oh, I can't believe it's September already, and I'm just so excited for the last couple of months of the year. This is hands down my favorite time of year. If you have been listening for a while, you know how much I am obsessed with Christmas. <laughs> I love Christmas vibes. I love Christmas decorations, putting up the tree, and most importantly, the food. However, Christmas time for me for a lot of years from the age, I'm going to say 20 to 25, was not like it is now. Christmas, the silly season, the holidays was a time of a lot of stress because of the calories, because of the food. I remember one Christmas in particular where my brothers were home and we were together and we were having food and we were making cocktails and I remember saying things like, oh, I can't have this because it's just got so many calories in it. Um, I don't want to, you know, have all this excess food and all of these excess drinks. Because in my head back then, I was like, the way that I looked at alcohol and cocktails was I'm like, oh my God, that's calories. I can't have that. And I remember my brother saying to me like, Laura, you're fine. Just have a drink. Just have one. You'll be okay. Or it's okay. It's just a day. Like you're fine classic man logic and like yeah it makes sense logically but for me it was so so emotional and like you know I would be getting fixated on the calories for a few days like it's something that I would just keep thinking about and like it hurts my heart so much is because I wasted so much time and I missed out on so many amazing memories because of my relationship with food, because it literally consumed these times. I was so anxious. I was so stressed about the calories, so much so that I wasn't actually able to fully enjoy and fully embrace this time of year. I wasn't able to enjoy the food. I wasn't able to make the cocktails. I wasn't able to be present with my loved ones because internally I was just stressing and so anxious on the inside. I remember another Christmas where I would wake up earlier than everyone else to get my workouts in. And I remember like some of my family being like, oh my God, like she's so disciplined. She's so healthy. But like deep down, the reason why I was getting up early to work out is because of all the excess calories that I had been eating. So it's, well, yes, it may look like, you know, she's so healthy, but it's like the reason why I was doing it was to essentially be okay with eating the food because otherwise I would just be beating myself up so much internally. My behaviors weren't healthy because that is not a healthy relationship with exercise. Exercise is, you know, it's there to make you feel good. It's meant to make you feel strong and it's meant to make you feel empowered, not to earn or burn your calories. And it wasn't only Christmas that this was all happening, right? Like it was the lead up into Christmas and the silly season and all the amazing, you know, the barbecues and the Christmas staff parties. It was like, it was just such an anxiety inducing time of year because there's so many events going on every single weekend. So for me, it was just like this time of year was basically like, you know, a big binge restrict cycle because it's like, because I never learned how to navigate these situations in a really healthy and balanced way, like I would always overdo it. I would always overeat and then I would feel really shit about it and feel really guilty and then really restrict myself and really increase my exercise during the week. And it was just such a vicious and toxic cycle. But the most, like the worst thing about the whole thing was it's just such an emotional battle. It's so draining. It's so, got so much energy and it costs so much time literally wasted on stressing about these things. And like I reflect in and like fast forward to now, it's like the last four years, my Christmases have been like that time of year. It's no longer 
a sense of stress for me. It is now a place of excitement and connection and love because I can actually be present with my loved ones and I can cook for them and I can enjoy food and I can look forward to the certain events and meeting up with my friends and enjoying the barbecues and enjoying the food instead of sitting there like stressing and dreading it. And it just like, it changed my life so much and it sounds dramatic but if you're going through something like this maybe that you can relate to it it honestly did it completely changed my life and essentially the core level like it made achieving my body composition goals 10 times fucking easier because there was no longer this stress this anxiety this constant thoughts about food there was no longer this under eating and then over eating situations there was no longer this yo-yoing there was no longer this under fueling i approached the situation just like any other day and because of that i started fueling my body correctly so i started seeing results in the gym but at the same time the mental load also went away so If you're struggling with this, I like see you so deeply because it is quite challenging. It is so hard to move all of this stuff because at the end of the day, it's not just a strategy thing. There's so many mindset elements that you need to work on in order to actually really break free. So if you're struggling with any of these following things, this episode really is for you. So if you are constantly thinking about calories and you're often hungry within an hour of having a meal, if your day now is, you know, revolving around your calorie budget and you often say no to going out with your friends or family because you don't want to undo your progress or you're feeling restricted by your low calories but you don't want to increase them because you're worried it will make you gain weight you're struggling with losing control around food and then you are restricting yourself to make up for it or you have low energy especially when 3 p.m hits and you need caffeine just to make it through your day If you are struggling with any of these, I'm going to guess that you potentially, you are making the same mistakes as I once was. For number one is constantly chasing a calorie deficit and always eating in it for at least three months. You spend hours in MyFitnessPal tweaking your calories to make sure you don't go over them. You label food as good and bad. You don't allow yourself to eat it because you're like, that's not worth the calories. Or you are focusing with your exercise of burning a lot of calories. You always are adding some sort of cardio because if you don't, you don't feel like you worked hard enough. Well, my queen, if you are struggling with any of those and you're making some of these mistakes, I am here to tell you that you have a problem with your relationship with food. Your relationship with food, your inability to trust yourself is the reason why you're struggling with all of these problems. Your relationship with food is driving you to make these mistakes. Your relationship with food, and let's go a little bit deeper. Why do we have a poor relationship with food? Is stemming from your fear of weight gain. Your fear of weight gain is essentially causing you to be so controlling and so obsessive with calories which is causing you to be stuck in all of these issues. Your fear of eating too much is the reason why you're sticking to these low calories. Outsourcing how much you're allowed to eat to MyFitnessPal disconnects you from your own hunger and fullness cues. So no wonder you're in these situations with the social events around Christmas and the silly season. That's why you're having so much stress and anxiety is because you don't trust yourself to stop when you feel full. There's a part of you that is so deeply afraid that you're just going to overeat every single time you're out of your routine. That's because you cannot trust yourself. You can't eat normally, basically, because you've been relying on my fitness power for so long to tell you how much you're quote unquote allowed to eat. Listening to all the rules and restrictions that you have in and around food, things like it's not time to eat yet, I can't have this because I've already had that today, I can't eat after, you know, 7 p.m., right? Listening to all these rules, right, in your head stops you from being able to actually listen to your body. And so therefore, you're not able to actually listen to what you actually feel like, what's actually going to satisfy you. And stops you from acknowledging your cravings so of course what happens then if you're not listening to what you actually want and giving yourself that if you're telling yourself no like when you want the chocolate what's going to happen three days later you're probably going to lose control of the chocolate or it will come out at a social event 
all of this food that you don't allow yourself to have, you're going to go ham, you're going to go crazy, and then you're going to feel so guilty about it, right? The rules and the restrictions are stopping you from being satisfied on a daily basis. So therefore, you're going to look for satisfaction elsewhere. And it's a big reason why so many people are losing control in and around food Or if you're not losing control, freaking thinking about it and being fixated on it and not being able to stop thinking about it. Because at the end of the day, restricting and obsessing might feel like control, right? Having all of that control to protect you from the fear of weight gain. But it's actually what is keeping so many people stuck. Because when you actually shift your focus to proper nutrition and start fueling your body correctly, a healthy relationship with food and start training with intention is when you are actually going to regain real control and essentially start seeing the changes that you want in your body and the freedom that you want in your life. And here's the thing. So many people to fix these issues think that they need to follow a strict meal plan. A meal plan that, you know, allows them to eat certain foods that maybe they weren't, quote unquote, were off limits. However, what you have to realize is a strict meal plan is another form of restriction. Essentially, it's another rule. So again, it's not you actually being able to make the choices that you want on a daily basis. There's no room to ebbs and flow. There is no room for you to really listen to your hunger and fullness cues because you're, again, it's just the same. Following a strict meal plan is just like following my fitness pal. It's the same situation. It's again, it's outsourcing what you're allowed to eat to an external thing. So again, it's you not being able to trust yourself to eat normally. And that's the problem with strict meal plans. Following a strict meal plan is not going to help you get this sense of mental freedom. All it's going to do is probably make you think about all the foods that are not on the meal plan. (laughs) So what do you need to do? What is the solution? Well, that's finding food freedom and essentially learning how to trust yourself. Basically, how to eat normal again. How to let go of this all or nothing in or out mentality so that you can start treating every single day the same, that you can trust yourself to stop when you are full and satisfied, to acknowledge how your body is feeling on a daily basis and give it what it needs so that you're left satisfied and that you can move on, right? Because until you learn how to trust yourself and find this sense of food freedom, you're going to continue to be stressing about calories, what you can and can't eat, always thinking about your next meal, potentially losing control around food, not being able to enjoy your social events and social situations, and probably a big standstill with your body because you keep yo-yo-yoing, whether that's restricting and under fueling and then potentially overeating or if that's just restricting in general and continue to restrict so therefore you're not actually fueling your body correctly so i know there's a lot of like bad rap around food freedom because i know a lot of people are like oh i don't want to find food freedom because if i find food freedom that means i'm not disciplined anymore finding food freedom means i have to give up my body composition goals finding food freedom means i have to gain all this weight and eat brownies every day And I totally get that because there's a lot of that on the internet. But I want to give you my hot take and what I believe food freedom to be. It's like, if you are just eating a brownie for the sake of eating a brownie every single day, then that's not self-respect. That's not nourishing your body and nourishing your soul because you're just eating it because you are finding food freedom. What I believe finding food freedom is, is about having that healthy relationship with food And it's the ability to eat without guilt, anxiety, or the constant pressure to follow rigid rules. It's about making choices that nourish your body and your mind while still enjoying the foods you love. It's finding the healthy balance between fueling your body correctly in the way that you need to, to look better in your body and improve your body composition. But at the same time, it's acknowledging how you're feeling on a daily basis and giving it what it needs in order for you to feel satisfied, happy, and in control. Like, imagine having a piece of cake without spiraling into negative self-talk or feeling the need to compensate for it later. That's what food freedom is. 
And that's the thing. It's like you're never going to be successful with a body composition goal if you have an unhealthy relationship with food because you'll keep sabotaging it. But I know there's a lot of hesitation and people are skeptical about the idea. And I get it. I too was very skeptical about finding food freedom myself because I believe like if I allow myself to eat what I wanted, I'll just binge on the junk food all the freaking time. Like if I allow myself to have the chocolate, then I will eat three rows. If I allow myself to have the pizza, I would eat, you know, a whole pizza and a half. And for me for a long time, it was difficult because because I had outsourced my hunger and fullness cues to my fitness pal and because I essentially ignored my hunger for a really long time, I lost touch with what it felt like to be hungry and full. So therefore, when I started my own journey of finding my version of food freedom, it was really challenging because there was a lot of fear because I was like, I don't even know what it feels like to be full. And if I start eating this Thai food, then I'm going to overeat because I don't know when to stop. So I struggled with this, right? And I struggled that, you know, giving myself permission to eat freely will lead to overeating or constantly making unhealthy choices. But here's the thing. When you restrict yourself, you actually give food more power over you. It's like telling yourself not to think about a pink elephant. And suddenly I reckon you're sitting there thinking about a pink elephant and it's all you can think about. But when you actually make peace with all foods and listen to your body's natural hunger and fullness cues, you'll find that your cravings often balance out. You'll want a variety of foods, not just the ones that you've labeled off limits. For an example, this week on Wednesday night, I had a burger for dinner and it was amazing and it was an American style burger. So it was, you know, it was a bit greasy. (laughs) And the next day I felt good. I was like excited about like I went to the gym and, you know, had my normal breakfast and stuff. And then I like I always ask myself, it's like, what do I feel like for lunch? What's going to really satisfy my soul right now? And then I was like, I really feel like a nourishing veggie, lean protein, like salad bowl. And that's exactly what I went for. And then for dinner, I asked myself again, I always ask myself these questions. What do I feel like? What's going to satisfy me? What's going to fill me up? And I was like, I just want some Indonesian food. Keep it basic. Keep it perfect. Some veggies, rice, some chicken done. Amazing. And that's what it gets to be. Like, I thought that I was like, if I allow myself burgers, I want burgers every single day. But because I, on the day that I felt like a burger, I acknowledged that. I was like, yeah, let's have a burger. Yeah, amazing. The next day, gone. I didn't feel like the burger anymore. It's because I acknowledged that and I gave myself to that. But if I kept listening to the rules and restrictions I once had, I wouldn't be able to acknowledge that. I wouldn't allow myself to have the burger. So then what would happen? I would continue to think about the burger for the next five days until the weekend came and then I would blow out and then I would say effort and then I'd probably overeat and just be stuck in this vicious cycle. So you can see how the importance of actually building a healthy relationship with food is actually key to really seeing sustainable change in your body. The next thing that I also used to believe is that I truly believed that I had to be so strict with rules to stay on track with my fitness goals. Like if I gave myself permission, I would be unhealthy, I would be undisciplined. And essentially what I was making that mean is then I wasn't going to be able to see results in my body. And I know that this is a common mindset with a lot of my clients and they used to think that as well, especially for us who are really goal orientated and hold themselves to a really high standard. My perfectionist girlies, I see you, right? Whilst this structure can be really helpful, there's a fine line between having a plan and being overly restrictive because food freedom doesn't mean throwing all nutrition knowledge out the window. Absolutely not. And that's what people don't actually get. What it means is incorporating a balance of food that you fuel your body and make you feel good whilst allowing flexibility and enjoyment. And like I always say, it's finding this balance that's actually going to help you stay on track because you're less likely to be deprived or burnt out. And as a perfect example of this is Rachel Dillon. She's one of my favorite fitness influencers because she models such a beautiful, healthy relationship with fitness and with food. 
and recently she posted a video of her making a two minute noodle recipe and she got so much backlash from people on the internet being like oh my god i can't believe you would promote something that's so unhealthy i can't believe that you would be telling people to eat two minute noodles and all of these things and in my mind, I was like, this is just so wild to how much diet culture really does have an influence on the population. And it's wild because it's actually these beliefs that are holding so many people back from actually achieving the body that they want. And that's what you have to think about. It's like, how, why is Rachel Dillon, you know, got this fucking fantastic toned body and she's eating these kind of foods? It's because she has a healthy relationship with food. And she says that herself. The reason why she can be so consistent and reach her body composition goals and look the way she does is because she has that balance. She actually has food freedom and she practices that every single day. And that's, she talks about that is she doesn't label food as good and bad and she allows herself to eat these things on a daily basis. And that's why she can remain consistent. So I think there's definitely something to look at in that. And the last thing that I wanted to speak to as well is some another thing that I personally used to like have the belief of. Like I used to believe like if I practice food freedom, I will lose control and essentially gain weight. And for me, for the longest time, like that was my biggest fear. The fear of weight gain. Oh my God, if I gain weight, I'm going to be fat. I'm ugly. My clothes don't fit. I feel that. I get that. And, you know, weight gain is a general concern for so many people especially if you've been conditioned to associate weight with health or weight with worth and value, confidence, happiness, all of the things. But it's important to understand that food freedom isn't about eating recklessly. It's not just eating whatever the F you want. It's about tuning into what your body truly needs and wants. Because when you learn to trust your body signals, you often find that it naturally guides you towards a weight that is healthy for you. And more importantly, you start to realize that health, your worth, your value, your confidence, your happiness is so much more than just a number on the scale. And like I already said to you at the beginning, it's like my life completely changed when I adopted this style of living my life and essentially eating because it's given me so much more than just, you know, happiness and satisfaction during these times of the year. It has given me so much more than all of that. It's just a way of being like my mental well-being, like no longer worrying about food or my body, like like at the end of the day, that can play a significant role on your mental health. It can lead to stress, anxiety, and negative self-image. So by embracing this lifestyle of food freedom, you free up so much mental space to focus on other aspects of your life, from you know your relationships to be able to you know actually enjoy hobbies and personal growth. Like there is so much more room for improvement because you've got so much time and mental space back because you're no longer thinking about calories and what you can and can't eat. Physical benefits as well from your health, right? When you're not caught up in these cycles of restriction and binging, you're more likely to make balanced food choices that support your physical health. It can lead to better digestion, more stable energy levels, and essentially also a healthier relationship with exercise. And the biggest thing that I love in all of this, and I love helping my clients, you know, find this sense of food freedom as well as, you know, getting strong and feeling confident within their bodies. It's like having this feeling, it puts you back in control. Not the dieting industry or social media's portrayed of what you should look like. It's about reclaiming your power to make choices that align with your values and your unique body, which is absolutely freaking amazing. So if you're ready to find your version of food freedom, to find balance with nutrition and exercise, and at the same time still work towards your body composition goals, then send me a DM over on Instagram and saying food freedom podcast, because the Fit and Free Academy is now open and it closes this Friday in three days time. This is your last chance this year to reclaim your life, reclaim your relationship with food and reclaim your own confidence within yourself because picture this 
Do you really want to spend another six months of your life, another Christmas, just being so stressed about food, like constantly on that roller coaster of thinking about that you're eating too much or that you're undoing your progress, that you have to restrict yourself, like this constant roller coaster? Or do you want to enjoy the silly season this year? Do you want to be present with your loved ones? Do you want to be able to be there at Christmas time instead of in your head stressing about all the noise? Like, do you want to, you know, have to, you know, go through Christmas and that and then at the new year being like, oh my God, new year, new me, like let's lose 10 kilos, let's shred, let's diet. Or do you want to live through the silly season with not even gaining any weight and just maintaining and actually enjoying yourself and essentially at the same time feeling better in your body? Because if I was you, I know what I would be choosing. (laughs) So thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much more than you know. Um, Like I said, if you're ready to take action and change your life, send me a DM on Instagram and let's chat food freedom podcast. So I know that you've listened to this amazing episode and I know that you are ready to absolutely change your life. But until then, I will see you in the next episode. Bye. number one challenge that all my clients face before we start working together is a lack of clarity on how much and what to eat to lose weight. Often they are making two huge mistakes, constantly trying to skip meals or eat under 1600 calories. Secondly, only allowing themselves bad foods like chocolate on the weekend, but end up binging all to tell themselves they're going to start again on Monday. If you feel like you have tried every diet under the sun and still can't figure out what to eat to achieve your weight loss goals take my free two minute quiz you can find the link in the show notes down below and it will help you figure out exactly what you're doing wrong with your nutrition and exercise and exactly what to do to fix it so that you can finally be confident in your body and achieve your weight loss goals